students, good to see you. And today, I hope I get to see you on Zoom today at four o'clock. So make sure you tune in. We can say hi to each other. Maybe I can think of another game to play. We're almost done with our book. See, it's only got a little bit left. <laughs> Do you like the grass behind me? Nice. Today we're on chapter 12. James Henry and Henry James. Dr. Moore went to get his mother. Mother, he said, this is Mr. James Henry Alden. He wants to take his grandchildren to live with him. Oh, I'm afraid they won't want to go with you, said Mrs. Moore, until they learn to like you. And they won't want to go while Violet is sick. Well, can I see them, begged Mr. Alden. I won't tell them who I am. That would help, agreed the doctor. If they grow to like you before they know who you are, that, then things might be easier. Yes, said Mrs. Moore. Stay here with us for a little while. The children will learn to like you, and then we can tell them that you are their grandfather. Thank you, said Mr. Alden. I'll go back home, get some clothes, and come back, and I will give you the $5,000. But Dr. Moore would not take the money. I just want these children to be happy. When Mary learned that she was to cook for Mr. Alden, she was frightened. How can I cook for him, she cried. He has everything. He is a very rich man. Well, you can cook for anyone, said Dr. Moore kindly. Just get out some of your good old chicken dinners and make some cherry dumplings. At dinner, Mr. Alden saw all his grandchildren but Violet. He smiled with delight when he saw Jessie come into the room in her quiet way. Children, said Mrs. Moore, this is Mr. Henry. Benny laughed. Henry and Mr. Henry, he remarked. That's funny. Henry shook hands with Mr. Alden. Henry shook hands with Mr. Alden before he sat down at the table. Where have I seen that man before, he thought. The children liked to hear Mr. Henry talk. He told them about the big cucumber in his garden. The, the cucumber was growing inside of a bottle. We can see it there. Here's the picture. So there's the cucumber, and it's actually growing inside that bottle. And he couldn't get it out. Why not? asked Benny. Well, it's too big, said Mr. Alden. How did it get in? asked Benny. Well, it was a little cucumber when it went in the bottle, said Mr. Alden. A cucumber will grow just as same as the bottle, in the, just as same in the bottle. It will grow so big that you can't get it out. I'd like to see that cucumber, said Benny, stopping in the middle of his cherry dumpling. Would you really, asked Mr. Alden, delighted. Well, someday you and I will go over and we can pick it. And we can bring it to Violet, said Benny. Yes, we'll bring it to Violet, agreed Mr. Alden. Henry thought again, where had he seen that man before? Oh, I wish I could remember. He could not remember, but he liked Mr. Alden very much, and all the children liked him because he was kind to them. At last, one day, Mr. Alden could see Violet and went softly into her room with some beautiful flowers from the garden. The children loved him when he patted Violet's dark hair and told him that he was sorry that she was so sick. He told her, too, about his garden, where the flowers came from. I'd like to see your garden, said Violet. I love flowers. How long are you going to stay, Mr. Henry? asked Benny. Shh, Benny said Jesse. Well, I want to stay here as long as I can, my boy, said Mr. Alden quietly. Henry looked at the man again. He knew that he had heard him say my boy before. Now, where was it? He could not remember. After dinner, Mr. Alden sat under a tree reading. Henry was working in the flower garden in front of the house. He looked at Mr. Alden again and again, and suddenly it came to him. As the man smiled over his book, it is the same man who gave me $25 prize in the silver cup, he told himself. I didn't remember him at first because I was so excited when I shook, when he shook hands with me. He took over another look and said, yes, it's the very same man. Henry sat thinking for a while. Then he got up and he went to find Dr. Moore. Do you know who gave me the prize on the field day? He asked the doctor. What's his name? James Alden of the Mills, replied the doctor. J.H. Alden over in Greenfield. He did not look at Henry while he was saying it. 
Poor Henry was so surprised. He almost fell over. The kind man is his grandfather. He went out on the steps to think about it. To begin with, this man was too young. Henry had thought his grandfather was going to be a very old man with white hair. And Mrs. Moore had called him Mr. Henry. Could it be that that man knew that he was their grandfather already and hadn't told them? Then he saw that Mr. Alden was getting out of his chair under the tree. Well, it's now I never thought, Henry. I have to do it. He walked eagerly over to the man who was, getting to, who was going toward the garden with his back to Henry. Then the man turned around and saw how excited Henry was. Are you James Henry Alden of Greenfield, Henry asked. I am, my boy, replied Mr. Alden with a smile. Does that mean you know that I know that you are Henry James Alden? Yes, said Henry quietly. Then James Henry Alden shook hands with Henry James Alden. Jesse and Benny came across the grass just in time to hear him say, but grandfather, grandfather, asked Jesse, what do you mean, Henry? Yes, Jesse, said Henry eagerly. He's the man we've been running away from all this time. I thought you were old, said Benny, and cross, said Jesse. I didn't know, Benny, said Jesse. Her face went red to think we were running away from this kind man, but her grandfather did not seem to mind. He patted her on the head and said, let's go up and see Violet. There was no stopping Benny. He hurried into Violet's room, holding Mr. Alden by the hand and shouting, it's grandfather, Violet. He isn't cross after all. What do you mean, said Violet? Isn't he Mr. Henry? My name is James Henry Alden, replied her grandfather. And my name is Henry James Alden, cried Henry. Well, well, said Dr. Moore. Violet held on to her grandfather's hand and listened to the rest of the talk excitedly. Where have you been living? asked Mr. Alden at last. Well, they all looked at each other, even Dr. Moore and his mother. Then they all laughed as if they would never stop laughing. You just ought to see, said Dr. Moore. What, cried the children at once. You never saw it in the daytime. Is that so, laughed the doctor. I've seen it many times in the daytime. Seen what, asked Mr. Henry. Oh, our house, said Jesse. We have been living in a boxcar in the woods. Then they all began to tell him about the dump and the dishes and the brook and the swimming pool. They had four beds of pine needle in the car, said Dr. Moore. How do you know, asked Jesse. Well, said Dr. Moore, the first day Henry worked for me, I walked after him as far as the, as the hill. Why did you do that, asked, asked Mr. Alden. Well, I liked him. I saw that he was a fine boy. I wanted to see where he lived. But you can't see the boxcar from the hill, said Jesse. No, but I came back that night and looked around, said Dr. Moore. About 10 o'clock, cried Jesse. Yes, said the doctor. I stepped on a stick and you heard me. Oh, there's our rabbit, cried Jesse and Henry. Watch, barked. Yes, I heard the dog bark. So I knew you guys were in the boxcar. Then I went home. But you came back, asked Jesse. Oh, yes. When you were picking cherries, I went to see your house. I wanted to see if you had enough to eat and enough dishes. Why didn't you tell me, asked Mr. Alden. Didn't you know I was looking for my grandchildren? The doctor laughed. Yes, I did. But... They were having such a fine time and I didn't want to tell. They got along very well until Violet got sick and then I told you. Well, I'm glad you finally did, said Mr. Alden. I have to see your house too, said Mr. Oh, I have seen your house too, said Mrs. Moore. I went up one day and saw all your dishes. I like your big pitcher and your teapot. Well, all of you have seen it but me, said Mr. Alden. We'll show you, cried Benny. I'll show you my cart made out of wheels and my pink cup. Good for you, said Grandfather, much pleased. When Violet gets, well, we'll all go up there. If you will show me your house, I'll show you my house. Do you have a house? asked Benny in surprise. Yes, you can live there with me if you'd like to. I have been looking for you children for a long time. Violet was soon well again, and one afternoon, they all started out to see the boxcar. The doctor took them in his car. Many people looked out the windows to watch Mr. Alden and his grandchildren. They were glad that the children had been found by such a kind grandfather at last. When they arrived at the old house, they ran around, talking excitedly, watched, sniffed and sniffed all around, looking for the bone he had buried. Everything was the same. 
Here's the dam we made for the pool, said Henry to his grandfather. See our building, shouted Henry, shouted Benny, for that was what he called the fireplace. It really burns too. And this is our refrigerator in the waterfall, and here's my pink cup. They all stepped on the stump and climbed in the car. They looked at the four beds and the dishes. Here is the same old pitcher and teapot, said Jessie, laughing. They found the blue tablecloth, and they all sat down by the brook and ate chicken and bread and butter for, and cookies. Benny drank milk from his pink cup. Mm, there he is. <laughs> and that's the end of that chapter. So that was quite the game that they had been playing, wasn't it? You know, we like to play pretend, don't we? Pretend is a game that children always play. What kind of things do you pretend? I'm excited to hear about in your journal right today. Write about something that you pretend and tell me all about it. You know what, if you wanna write more than one sentence, two sentences, maybe a whole paragraph, three or four sentences, tell me all about what you do to play pretend. And I'll be excited to see those. You know, some of you have been very consistent at sending them to me. And every time I get one, it makes me smile because I love to see your writing and I love to hear what you're writing about. So don't forget to have your mom take a picture of it and send it to me. Love you all. Have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow.